Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello. Welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone. I'm your host, Arby Kelly, and you are watching Think Tech on Spectrum OC16. Now, today, we're going to start off with a body language tip. I don't know about you, but I sometimes get nervous on camera or when I'm talking to a big crowd, and those nerves can just totally derail your entire experience. So one thing you can do to actually make yourself calm down is to rub what's called your vagus nerve, and that is actually right here at the base of your throat. And if you're watching and you rub this and you do it slowly and firmly, you'll notice it actually calms yourself down, which is super handy when you're about to go on camera or about to go on stage. And you'll, you'll see this happening, not always just the, the rub, but men will sometimes adjust their collar or adjust their tie. Women will sometimes kind of toy with their jewelry or play with their jewelry here. And those, those three things are nervous gestures that if you see someone else doing them, it's a good cue they're nervous. But if you're nervous, you can try that to calm yourself down. Now today we've got a really cool guest that I'm very excited to have on the show. And I've actually never met this guest before. <laughs> This guest was actually introduced to me by Pam Chambers, who met her and said, she's fabulous, you've got to have her on the show, you've got to make it happen. So here today for the first time, and meeting me for the first time, yep. is Rose Wong. Hi, Rose. Hi, you, thank you. Handshake. Yeah, thank nice you for to meet coming you, on. of course. So can you, can you help me understand exactly what do you do? So first off, I'm a student. Uh, I'm a sophomore student at the Shadler College of Business. Mm. Uh, I'll be triple majoring in marketing, entrepreneurship, and finance. Wow, yeah. <laughs> that is a big deal. Yeah, and then I own two jewelry businesses. So the first one is called Kolohe Ocean Gems. Uh, it's a local jewelry business. I started when I was 16 years old, so around four years ago. Um, and then the second jewelry business is called Rose Gold Gems, which I just mm. launched uh, two weeks ago, actually. And so that one focuses on uh, affordable, fine luxury jewelry. And I just got an office for the two businesses, and I'm thinking of opening up a marketing firm within the office, too. Um, I'm also the president of Hawaii Student Entrepreneurs, which is a Shadler club at UH Manoa dedicated to helping students successfully start and run their own businesses. I think you ran out of fingers there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. I had to so shorten cool. it, too. <laughs> that is so cool. So you're triple majoring. Triple major. And a sophomore. Sophomore. And running two businesses and thinking of opening a third, third office, business. Think there. And you're also the president of the Entrepreneurship Club. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to see why you're the president when you take <laughs> into account everything before that. Uh -huh. can, you, can you help me understand how, how this all started for you? Uh, so my jewelry business started because I was working at Magnolia in Kahala, and I saw the jewelry pieces there, and um, I just wanted to make it. So I started making it, I started selling it immediately, and so I got my first part-time job when I was 14 years old. Since 14 and 16, I had around eight jobs, because I was never satisfied. Back then, minimum wage was about $7, I think it was. And I didn't understand why I was getting so paid so little, but I was working a lot. I didn't like the long hours, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to do something on my own. So I began making jewelry. Um, I remember going to Ben Franklin and first uh, putting in the first $50, and I thought that was so much to me. <laughs> um, but I didn't know that it would later turn into a huge business that would later pay for my rent, my tuition, everything else, uh, my own house, my offices. Wow. Um, so since then, I started selling in the store Magnolia, and that's where I first began. And then I started selling with Aloha Pearls. I started selling online at craft fairs around the island, craft fairs on the other Hawaiian islands. And then from there, I started rose gold jewelry because, so uh, Kaloi Ocean Gems is just uh, 14 karat gold fill and sterling silver, so it's more on the affordable side. But I wanted to scale up and do more with the luxury jewelry. Mm. So that's why I started rose gold jewelry. Now, I've heard the statistic that most businesses fail within three years. And so here you are super young, super <laughs> capable, evidently, and you've already got two and you're working on a third business. Can you tell me what you think the difference has been for you to help you keep moving forward? Uh, the difference has been, honestly, a lot of networking. Um, there's a lot of jewelry artists in Hawaii, it's such a big popular market, and so it is hard to compete. But I think because I kept striving to meet people, kept striving to make these connections, that's something that allowed me to succeed in such an overpopulated market. Um, I think another thing is that I just kept going. So, I mean, 
Um, a lot of people have told me, oh, it's just jewelry. Uh, and I actually doubted myself a few times, too. And when I was—so, for example, I went on a national program, the Women's Business Enterprise National Council, uh, the Student Entrepreneur Program in Vegas. And we were doing a pitch competition. And instead of pitching my jewelry business, I was doing a new tech idea, because I didn't think jewelry was big enough. But the same time that was going on, there was a big uh, national business conference fair and where senior executives from the Fortune 500 businesses attended. And I had a jewelry booth there, and I ended up selling out in one day. And then the next day, I went on and I pitched this tech app when I should have been pitching my jewelry business, because it's a, it's a fully operational and fully scalable business, and I didn't realize that until then. So I think not downing my small business helped a lot, and then it helped to grow into this bigger thing, which is rose gold. That's incredible. Thank and I you. know I'm a business owner myself, and I know all of our viewers are all either maybe they've got a small hobby business, maybe they're putting in hours at work, but all of us, we feel that doubt that what we're doing, is it really worth it? Definitely. Is this is this worth putting out there? Yeah. So was there anything you had to do to help get over that doubt, to start believing in yourself? Um, I guess it was that event in Vegas where I truly realized the potential of my business. And I realized that it was a product that people wanted. And um, there wasn't really anything that I specifically did, but I just kept going. Just and kept I going. just didn't stop. Yeah. And that's powerful. So often we think, oh, this is too hard. I'm going to stop. And we've left, we've left money on the table. We've left potential on the table. Definitely. So I'm curious, are you still the only person making your jewelry? Um, I, have, I have a little factory sometimes at home. I have 12, I come from a family of 12. So sometimes I'll have my uh, sisters or my brothers helping me and we'll form like a full factory line, someone mm -hmm. polishing, someone hammering. Uh, right now, I am the only one making it, but I'm working to hire employees, hire interns. And since I just got a new office space, then that'll be much easier than just doing it all on my own. That is impressive. Yeah. So we're going to switch gears a little bit. I'm curious, can you tell me more about why you decided on this triple major? And how do you, how do you see that impacting your future business? Uh, I decided to do triple major. So I'm not in the Shadler College of Business yet, since I'm only a sophomore. We go in your junior year. But I decided to triple major because those are the three parts of business that I'm super interested in. Um, marketing. I was originally going to do just marketing and then entrepreneurship, where my businesses came in. So when I first got into college, I didn't think that I was going to continue on with my business. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was originally a psychology major. And then my business started to blow up, so I decided that I might as well do something with that. So marketing, and then I added on entrepreneurship, and then finance. I feel like it's just a really good topic to know about, especially for a business. And it's really confusing for me because I'm not a big numbers or finance person. I'm good at selling, but I'm not good at making all the formulas and the Excel sheets, but I want to learn. And I think that's uh, it's all tied in together and it'll all help me improve my business. And it's a good, um, it's a good, how do I say it? It's a good, it's something good to have in my pocket just in case I don't pursue my businesses, my, the three majors. That makes sense. And yeah. already, all right, we've got another tip for you viewers. One, don't give up. But two, just like you're doing with finance, how you don't feel like it's a strength of yours, but you're going to figure it out Definitely. anyway. I think that's, that's great business, business advice. If you see something where you have a weakness in your company or in your potential, go out and try and fix it. Find it, what resources you have that you can use to actually make this work. Exactly, and college is a great resource. I'm, I'm also curious about how you see your business changing in the future. So you started with one jewelry company. Mm -hmm. You've added a luxury jewelry company on top of that. You're thinking of opening up a marketing company. Where else do you see your businesses going in the future? Uh, well, Kolohe right now is mostly local. I do sell. I do have a few clients uh, international. I have some clients in Australia, New Zealand, France. Um, but Kolohe, I didn't think Kolohe would be able to scale because it's such a popular thing in Hawaii right now. And so I started Rose Gold because Rose Gold is easier to scale since it's affordable luxury jewelry and it's a uh, fine, um, solid 14-karat uh, gold, diamonds and gemstones. And so that one I want to expand. And whenever people ask me after college if I wanted to uh, continue on with Kolohe, I, it was never it was never really an option because I couldn't I didn't think that I could scale that business so I started Rose Gold Gems and this one I think I could scale 
So right now we just launched, uh, we have a website up, we're working with influencers, and we're doing a, long, a super strong focus on being a digitally native brand. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if you've heard of the brand movement watches. No, I haven't. So we're employing the same kind of digitally native, um, digitally native focus that they are. So they are affordable luxury watches. And by year three, they were able to hit 60 million because of their strong Instagram campaign. Wow. And Instagram has proven to be a super big driver in business for Kolohe, for Rose Gold, and for any business, especially today in such a um, technology-driven yeah. generation. And that makes sense because your product is so visual. People yeah. see it, they see models wearing it, they think, oh, I love that. Oh, I would love to wear yeah. that. So now I'm curious, are you wearing your jewelry today? I am. I can't wear anything besides my pieces. I bet not. I yeah. bet you're always asked, oh, are you wearing your own jewelry? Yeah. So do you want to tell me about any of your pieces? Um, sure. So this one, so everything is made of 14 karat solid gold fill. Um, and then this is a pistachio pearl. And then what am I wearing? Which earrings? And then, so all of my pieces, um, they're just designed in my studio right now. My sisters help out a lot with the designs. Uh, so everything is from Kolohe. There are a few rings that are from rose gold. So these are the solid 14 karat pieces mm. with diamonds over there. Oh, those and are then great. I work a lot with um, natural stones too. So this mm -hmm. one is ruby. This is citron. Um, and these are part of my new collection that I'm. I'm actually I actually have a pop up with Lululemon Waikiki mm. uh, on Wednesday. So this is all part of the new collection that nobody's seen before. Oh, exciting! Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that'll be uh, on sale on Wednesday at Lululemon. That is awesome. Yeah. So uh, switching gears a little bit again, with you as the president of the Entrepreneurship Club at Schidler. Mm -hmm. How are you surrounded by other entrepreneurs who are as driven as you are? Definitely, that's why I joined. Um, I think the best thing that someone could do is surround them with the right people. And within the club, I joined because I was going to all these networking events and I was being inspired and motivated by these speakers. Um, there's a lot of other small business owners also that are also students, and so we kind of work together and help each other out. We motivate each other, inspire each other. We help each other find ways to sell, uh, pop-ups, events, and I think it's really great when different artists can come together with their different passions, and they're given the opportunity to do something about what they love to do and just create a big project together. Mm. So do you create a lot of projects with these other entrepreneurs? Yeah, definitely. So I started a new program called Third Thursday, where every third Thursday of the month uh, we sell on campus, mm. uh, right in the middle of campus. And I usually rally about five different uh, student-run businesses. And it's our kind of way of fundraising, too, because all the other clubs, they do like car washes or yeah food fundraisers, but we're the Entrepreneurs Club, so mm. I figured it's a good way for us to be entrepreneurial and still fundraise money for our club. That is fascinating. Yeah. So is this open for anyone to join? What are what are some of the particulars for people wanting to get involved? Uh, you have to be a student to be in the club, but we do a lot of networking events. Mm. Uh, we bring in a lot of speakers, so we're actually bringing in Pam mm. for one of our events next semester. We do a lot of workshops. Uh, we just did a workshop on how to sell on Amazon. Uh, we do different company tours. So we did a company tour of the ABC store headquarters to figure out how to actually get your product into the ABC store. Um, so those are the basics, the workshops, uh, company tours, and speaking events. Awesome. Yeah. So is, everyone can get involved. Everyone yeah. can get involved. That is really cool. Now, viewers, we are going to take a very short break. It's going to be just a commercial break, but when you come back, you'll be watching out of the comfort zone on Theta on Spectrum LC16 with RB Kelly and Rose Wong. Mm -hmm. See you in a minute. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. 
Hi, my name is Bill Sharp, host of Asia in Review, coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii, right here in the center of the Pacific Ocean. Asia in Review is the oldest of the 35 or so shows um, uh, broadcast by Think Tech Hawaii. We've been in production since 2009. Our goal is to provide you, the viewer, with information, breaking information about events in Asia. Asia being anything from Hawaii west to Pakistan, from the Russian uh, Far East, south to Australia and New Zealand. We hope to see you every Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. Welcome back to Out of the Comfort Zone on Think Tech on Spectrum OC16. I'm your host, R.B. Kelly, and I'm here with fabulous entrepreneur and student, Rose Wong. Thank you, Rose. I'm Thanks. so glad you're still here. Definitely. Well, I realized after I said that how silly that sounded. <laughs> I drove her away. She left the studio. <laughs> but anyway, I was wondering if your jewelry, is it just for women, or do you also have something for men? I do carry a line for men's jewelry. Um, I was actually working with Henry Capono, mm. and together we created this piece. So I use his guitar strings, and then I put pearls on the end of it. And so it's kind of a unisex uh, piece. So his fans mm. can wear it, his girl fans, his guy fans. Um, I also do a lot of the stretchy bracelets with the natural stones, uh, lava beads, wood beads for men. I do some necklaces for men. So we include everyone. Include yeah. everyone. And how do you come up with the inspiration for your jewelry? Um, so my jewelry in creating and editing is the only way I am creative. That's why I'm going into marketing. Um, a lot of it comes from taking ideas from things that I like in life, like beaches or surfing, and then kind of putting that into jewelry. Um, a lot of it is just when I sit and just come up with ideas. And a lot of it is from my friends, too. And they're like, oh, they draw out a, a design, and they ask me to make it. A lot of it is from my sisters coming up with specific, unique designs. So a lot of it does actually come from other people. I'm very motivated and inspired by those around me. Do you take requests? I do take personal requests, yes. I can do customs. Awesome. Definitely. And how can people find more about you? Do you have websites? How do people find you? So I'm online. I have two websites, Kolohe Ocean Gems and Rose Gold Gems. Um, the Kolohe website, I have to update it because it was back when I made it when I was 16 years old. And so the, there's a lot of change. There's a happen. lot of change that needs to happen, yeah. And then the Rose Gold Gems, you can definitely see the change. Um, it looks a lot better than the Kolohe Gems. I'm also on Instagram, Kolohe Ocean Gems. Um, I do pop-ups at Salt Kakako every third Saturday. And so my Instagram, website, and Facebook is where you can find me. And if, if someone in our audience is watching and wondering if they would be a good fit for you and your business, what exactly are you looking for as you're looking for employees in your business? Uh, well, right now with, our, with the office space that we got, it's one of the artist's lofts. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to essentially do is make it into a um, creative working space. So I have my office and I have my manufacturing factory in the back. And then the open room will be open for pop-up events, First Friday events, a photo studio, a showcase, a retail mm -hmm. space, whatever we want to create it. So right now, I'm looking for marketing interns. Um, I'm looking for two people to teach how to actually make the jewelry, and so they can come into my office and uh, create the jewelry there. And so what I would look for in an individual is creativity, definitely, um, ability to be open to learning and to creating pieces. You can't be scared of using a torch. Uh, I get burned a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, just someone that's creative and open to learning new things, yeah. If you had the choice between, say there's, there's two different people. One of them is very open and very creative, but maybe not as consistent. And the other person is very open, not so creative, but very consistent. Which of the two would be a better fit for you? That's a good question. I would say the creative, but not consistent. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you can teach consistency. You can't really teach creativity. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So viewers, if you're watching and you have always been super creative, but you've been struggling with it, <laughs> and maybe you're looking for maybe you're looking for something where you can build your creativity, create a business, and learn how to have a successful business, go check out Rose. <laughs> she gave you her website. Will you give those again, just so we yeah, can hear it Yeah. So it's www.kolohaoceangems. Oh, I know it's hard to remember, and it's really long. So that. I came up with the name when I was 16 years old. I wasn't thinking about the three-syllable business rule. Um, and no one's going to remember Kolohe, especially people.
people from the mainland, and half the people don't even know what it means. It means little rascal, oh, by good. the way. Thank yeah. you for telling yeah. me. I was wondering. <laughs> yeah, but it, it seems like rascal. you've been successful in spite of any of the rules you've broken along the way. Yeah, I, I, th I would say I've done a pretty good job. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, too. Yeah. <laughs> you walked in and you started telling me things, and I was like, wow, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Like, this is very, very impressive. Thank you. Where do you see yourself, not just your business, but yourself going in five years? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, I didn't think that I would be a business major just a year ago. I thought I was going to be a psychology major. Um, I definitely still want to be running my businesses. So my original major was going to be psychology, and then my original major was going to be marketing. And so I'm either going to still be running my jewelry businesses or doing a marketing job because with marketing, I still get that creativity of creating things digitally instead of jewelry pieces. Um, and I really like having that creative mind. I'm good at it. I'm good at Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. And I could spend hours on my laptop editing a logo for someone. Yeah. So it seems like that's you're always going to have that creative outbent, and it's always going to be profitable. Yeah. Just the shape it takes might change in the future. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's typical. Even people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, a lot of us, we don't know where we'll be five years from now, 10 years from now, sometimes even a week from now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you're, you're definitely on the right track here, however things change as they move forward. Mm -hmm. um, can I ask how old you are? So I just turned 20 uh, March 20th. That is yeah. so exciting. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. All right, I've got, this has suddenly brought a lot home to me. I'm turning 24 this year, Ooh. and I'm like, okay, okay, maybe maybe I could do a little bit more in my business. Maybe I could do a little bit more to, to educate time. myself. Yeah. yeah. And I think we do. We have all the time in yeah. the world. <laughs> so can I ask, what really made you decide to to make your business successful? I mean, all of us have thought about starting businesses, and you know, I remember when I was 14, I started selling, like, I had my own chickens, and I had this oh. little free-range <laughs> farm. But when it, when it didn't go well, I shut it down, and I turned mm -hmm. to something else. Mm -hmm. so what were some of the early challenges you faced as you created your business at just 16? Um, early challenges? I would say I'm a pretty optimistic person, and I never really see my challenges as challenges um, or as failures. Um, but I guess the biggest obstacle was doing it all on my own, maybe. Um, yeah, I always, whenever I enter business pitch competitions, everyone always asks me, what was your biggest challenge? Oh, so and you, hear, you hear this all the time. <laughs> yeah, and I always have a hard time answering because I've been so blessed and so lucky that I haven't had any big challenges or outfalls um, within my business. A lot of it has been successes. Well, yeah. then, were were there any people who helped teach you along the way or helped guide you? Uh, definitely. So my first manager at Magnolia, um, she helped me get it. Obviously, I didn't know what, what licensing I needed to get, so she helped me do the GE license, the LLC license. Uh, I later partnered with Aloha Pearls, which is one of the biggest pearl distributors in Hawaii, and he taught me about where to get um, my wholesale material. He taught me about different clients, different outlets. I got to participate in the Made in Hawaii show because of his company. So I've definitely had mentors that have helped the process um, of my successes and have helped uh, minimize the outfall, the downfalls, yeah. Those mentors make all the difference. Definitely. Can I ask, where will people see you in the next few months? What, what events do you have coming up? Yeah, so like I said, we have the one at Lululemon um, on tomorrow, actually, 5 to 9 in Waikiki. And then we also have an event at UH on campus Thursday, which is 10 to 2. And then we're also sponsoring Miss Kaka'ako. Mm. Um, and she's holding a Spring Fest fundraiser on Saturday at South Kaka'ako. Um, and that one is three to nine. So she's there's a lot of performances. All the proceeds are going to a local charity of her choosing. Uh, so it's going to be a super fun event. So we have three coming up this week. So you guys can't miss those. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Well, I know. There are a lot of older people watching this, but we also have a lot of teenagers and kids who are watching this as it goes live, or maybe they're watching the replay. But for them, they face a lot of discouragement when they're creating their businesses. They're afraid of bias. They're afraid mm -hmm. of failure. They're afraid of bankruptcy. What advice would you give them to help them as they begin creating their businesses? Um, I would say that the first step is just showing up. 
And once you begin manifesting something inside of your head and thinking of that success and having that motivation, then it becomes coming real. It becomes real, it becomes something not just in your head. And I find that a way to help with that is to consistently surround myself with people who are challenging myself, who motivate me and inspire me. And another good way to do that is um, I love lists, and I constantly make lists for my daily list. I have my weekly list, my monthly list. And I think by creating this list of small things that I have to um, accomplish during my day, during my week, once you can cultivate, the cultivation of small wins will lead to bigger successes. So start yourself off small. Um, start yourself off just getting the licensing for it. And that's still on the road to success. That's something small that you can start with. Um, and take advantage of your resources. Being in school, there's a lot of resources. And if I hadn't joined the Entrepreneurs Club at UH, I wouldn't have gone to go to these national programs. I wouldn't have got to met all the people that I met. I wouldn't have met Pam. I wouldn't be here right now. Um, I wouldn't have participated in won business plan competitions. And I would say just take advantage of your resources. They're there. There's people that want to help you. And I think a lot of it, especially in Hawaii, is it's not what you know, it's really about who you know, and having a good network and a good connection will definitely help your business succeed. So it sounds like you had to take advantage of your network and build your network, but were there any times you had to cut people off or get rid of people or get them out of your life? Yes, definitely. So my first time I tried to hire someone, um, I had a big jewelry order for one of my uh, bigger jewelry clients. And I hired her and her two friends for, paid them $15 an hour, which I thought was pretty generous. And then at the end of the order, I um, offered her a position with my company because she was good at it. And so I gave her two options. I said, you can either get paid $15 an hour consistently, um, but it's not as much as you can be making, or you can get paid how I get paid for whatever piece you sell. It's less consistent, but it's a lot more money. And so, of course, she chose that because it's more money. And then after about a month, um, after about a month, she something happened, and she demanded f to repartner and rebrand and equal ownership. And she demanded 50% of my company, and she wanted to be an equal partner, and she wanted to change my name and everything. And I was like, I've been working on this for four years. You've been here for a month, and... And, um, no. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. That must have been tough. Do you find yourself often having to, to have those difficult conversations or make those choices? Um, I think some of it was my... My fault, too, for not, I guess, setting a contract before. I had to learn that, too. Yeah, That's so I learned the hard way, but it's good that I learned. Um, and so when I'm hiring these employees now, I'm definitely going to have a contract written up. That's a good lesson. That's one yeah. I had to learn, too. And it's an ugly, ugly lesson to learn. But once you know it, it's so valuable. Yeah, helps a lot, definitely. Right. We've got about one minute left. Is there any anything else you'd like to say to our viewers? Um, I guess if there was one thing that you should take away is to constantly motivate yourself, constantly inspire yourself. It sounds really cliche, but it's helped my business. And write those goals down, because once you start to write them down, they begin, they begin to manifest into something that's real. And a lot of what limits people is our environment, and especially people in Hawaii, we live in paradise, we begin to become content with our lives. But I think one should always be challenging themselves and looking for the next thing to overcome and to achieve. And if there's one thing that you should remember from this episode is just keep motivating yourself. Thank you, Rose. That's thank very you. powerful. <laughs> and you being here today has actually helped motivate me. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Thank you, viewers. And we will see you next Tuesday at 1 p.m. to watch Out of the Comfort Zone on Thick Tech on Spectrum OC16. See you then.